to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Now hear me while I pray, take all my guilt away, oh let me from this day be whole. Thy rich grace impart Strength to my fainting heart My zeal inspire As Thou hast died for me Oh, may my love to Thee Pure, warm, and changeless be Life's dark maze I tread, and griefs around me spread. Be thou my guide, bid darkness turn to day, wipe sorrow's tears away. No, let me ever stray from thee. Hello and welcome. My name is Chaplain Elisa, and I will be leading our Bible study discussion today. As usual, be prepared to pause the video at certain points to give yourself a little time with the questions that we'll talk about through this scripture passage. So be ready with a remote control or to touch the screen or however you like to pause. Let's begin with a short prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time to dig into your holy word. We pray that your Holy Spirit would be our teacher and we would learn from you and from one another. We pray in your holy name. Amen. Today we are looking at a passage from the book of Psalms, Psalm 71, which was written by King David written in his old age and intended for the people of God to use in their afflictions, especially in their elder years. So I'll begin by reading this passage aloud, Psalm 71. You, O Lord, are my hope, my trust, O Lord, from my youth. Upon you I have leaned from before my birth, you are he who took me from my mother's womb. My praise is continually of you. I have been an example to many because you are my strong refuge. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. Do not cast me off in the time of old age. Forsake me not when my strength is spent. I will hope continually and will praise you yet more and more. My mouth will tell of your righteous acts, of your deeds of salvation all the day, because their number is passed by knowledge. O oh God, from my youth you have taught me, and I still proclaim your wondrous deeds. So even to old age and gray hairs, O oh God, do not forsake me until I proclaim your might to another generation, your power to all those to come after me. Amen. What a beautiful passage. So let's begin by thinking about King David, the one who wrote this beautiful psalm. Right back up at the beginning in verse 5, how does David describe God? What are the words that David uses to describe God? He starts out by calling God my hope and my trust. And in verse 6, David talks about how long David has been walking with God, a companion to God. What does David say? from my youth, 
from before my birth, from my mother's womb. So what time frame does that encompass? How much of David's life has he been with God? Has God been with David? His entire life from before he was even born. Now, let's think a little bit historically about King David. I wonder, anyone watching here, if you know anything about the life of David. You might remember some of these from Sunday school days or studying the Old Testament. If you know a few stories about David, pause the video here and talk about them. There's a few famous ones. Well, David has had a very eventful and I would say even difficult life, even though he's anointed the king by God over the Hebrew people. He started out as just a lowly shepherd boy and in a famous battle, he was the one who slayed the giant Goliath in the name of the Lord, David and Goliath. And David has lived his life with enemies. The previous king, Saul, wanted to kill David in addition to lots of other armies. That's what happens when you're king, right? Other, other nations are trying to take you out. And there were personal difficulties in David's life. You may recall the story of David and Bathsheba, where he committed adultery with another man's wife. So he has not had an easy or a perfect life at all. I wonder how many of us can relate to that. But through all these difficulties in life, who has David called on over and over? Who has David leaned on? God. What does David say in verse seven of this Psalm? You, God, are my strong refuge. So pause here and talk about what is a refuge? What does that mean? All right, a place of refuge is a place of safety, isn't it? A place of shelter, of strength. Usually a refuge is like a fortress. It's a a well-guarded place. It's a hiding place for those who are being attacked. And David speaks of God as his refuge. So what do you think when David was undergoing all of these difficulties over the course of his life, whether it was battling the giant Goliath or uh, being hunted down by the previous king, King Saul, or falling into his own personal weakness and sin. Who did he turn to as a refuge, as a fortress, as a safe place? God, he calls God his refuge. Then in verse nine, David speaks again of his length of days, length of days. He says, in the time of old age and when my strength is spent. Again, we can relate, those of us getting up in years, we can relate to those descriptions of this time of life. So what does David say that he needs God to do in his old age when his strength is spent? He says, do not cast me off, God. Stay close. Help, help. <laughs> That's the, one of the great prayers, just help God, help me. I still need your help. David is old. He feels understandably tired, spent, not a lot left in the tank. Do you ever feel that way? Again, of course we do. But then David's tone changes in verse 14. Let's look at that verse again. I will hope continually and will praise you yet more and more. My mouth will tell of your righteous acts, of your deeds of salvation all the day, because their number is past my knowledge. So what does David decide to do? What is he going to do even when he's feeling tired and old and weak? He says, but I will hope continually 
and I will praise God yet more and more. He's not done. He's not done praising God. He knows that God is his refuge, was and is his hiding place, his place of safety. He makes the choice of the will to remember and list the things that he remembers about God. What does he list that God has done? God's righteous acts, God's deeds of salvation, and how many? What is the words that David uses in verse 15 for how many of these mighty acts of God David has experienced? Their number is past my knowledge. There's an infinite number. He can't even count how many times God has been faithful to him and the mighty deeds he has seen God do. It's great to remember that. That's something we can do. Just tell the stories to ourselves as well as to others. Then in verses 17 and 18, what does David recall again? How long has God been with him? What is the time span of God's faithfulness? Let's look at those verses again. O oh God, from my youth, you have taught me and I still proclaim your wondrous deeds. So even, again, how long? To old age and gray hairs. So those are the bookends, right? David says, from my youth and now in my old age, I proclaim your wondrous deeds. Oh God, do not forget me. Do not forsake me. So what does David want to do with the rest of his life? Again, David's not done and neither are you. Neither are we. We're not done because God still has work for us to do and goodness that he wants to lavish on us. So David says in verse 18, so even to old age and gray hairs, O God, do not forsake me until when? Until I proclaim your might to another generation, God's power to all those who come after me. So what is David thinking of here? David's thinking of his legacy. David's thinking of past his own lifespan. What does he want people to remember? The great and glorious might and love of God. So that's a beautiful legacy for us to think about, isn't it? Think about who is in your next generation. David says, God, I want to keep going until I've had a chance to proclaim your goodness to the next generation. So that's my question for us. Who is in your next generation? Who is it that you want to see and to hear about God in your life? That could be children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, friends, all kinds of people, anyone you come across, really, <laughs> who's younger than we are. And what have you seen God do in your life? That's what David says he wants to proclaim. So I want you to pause here and think about, generate ideas. How has God helped you in your life? Generate as many ideas as possible for the ways you have seen God help you in your life. Think about who we are to proclaim God's goodness to in the next generation. What kinds of things do you want to tell them? What do we want to what do we want the next generation to know about God? God's power, God's righteousness, God's great deeds, God's immense, immeasurable, steadfast love for his people. Amen. Let's close in prayer. O oh God, may we, like King David, even to old age and gray hairs, proclaim your goodness to us to the next generation. Thank you, God, for this good legacy that you call us to. 
we pray in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you again, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Yeah.